<laughs> Welcome to our first YouTube live broadcast. I'm Captain Jessica Derwitt. I am the Chief of Staff for the Washington Wing of Civil Air Patrol, and we're so excited to be here with you tonight. We have a special guest, Second Lieutenant Francisco Perez of Joint Base uh, San Antonio, and he is a remotely piloted aircraft pilot. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment and thank First Lieutenant Victoria Wanzer, McCord Composite Squadron's unit commander. We're here with their whole unit tonight. Everybody wave. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, do you have any words for us before we begin? Um, one, I wanted to say thank you so much for um, letting us be the first squadron to test this whole program out. And thank you, Second Lieutenant Perez, for taking the time to do this, knowing that you're a completely different state. This is a great opportunity for us. My thank pleasure, you. my pleasure. All right. So just a moment while I get my screen flipped around. <laughs> Lieutenant Perez, you're on with us, sir. Yes, awesome. Good evening, guys. How are you guys doing? Great, Great. Thank you, sir. Great, awesome. So I'm really missing the Seattle weather right here. It's about, let's see, 77, and later today was like 90 with thunderstorms. So I'm really missing the Seattle skies. I was, um, I was flying over Seattle, I think it was yesterday, and compared to the last time I went, see, I mean, I could have seen Mount Rainier from the from the airport, so it was really cool. <laughs> so, are we ready to start the briefing? Yes, sir. I will go ahead and get our screen to share here. Awesome. I'm gonna move this. We're good? We're good. Awesome, okay guys, good evening. So I am Second Lieutenant Francisco Perez and I'm gonna be talking to you about the next generation of aviation in the Air Force. So that's remotely piloted aircraft. Um, next slide, please. So just a brief overview of what I'm gonna, gonna be talking about. I'm just gonna give a quick background of myself, a couple of the RPA airframes uh, the GCS or ground control systems, uh, the RPA's development, and a brief summary of the briefing. Next slide, please. So, quick background of myself. Um, I am I was born in small island of Puerto Rico. So, small island in the Caribbean Sea. However, it's very beautiful. But when I say small, is that you can actually travel uh, across the whole island in about two hours. So, if I put that into perspective. If I travel north two hours here from San Antonio, I'll probably be in Texas still. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very cool. Um, the people there are very, very warm, very kind. I really love that place. Um, I stayed there for my bachelor's degree as well. I did my bachelor's degree in biology in the German University of Puerto Rico. Uh, so I also joined the ROTC when I was a sophomore in my college. And I mean, that was an awesome experience because I was able to actually uh, get that normal college experience. Plus, uh, I was trained to be uh, uh, or to become uh, an officer in the United States Air Force. So it was really rewarding. So here you can see a couple pictures. Uh, the bottom right picture, that's me when I was back at uh, back at, in, in the ROTC. And top right picture, that's Happy Francisco once he got commissioned and he graduated college. So uh, right now I am uh, stationed at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. I'm currently waiting for RPA training to start. And while I'm waiting for the training to start, I got this awesome gig at the Air Force Recruiting Service. Uh, so I love traveling. Um, I've traveled across Europe. I travel across uh, the United States. But with this, I mean, I'm traveling everywhere around the country. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in Virginia Beach, uh, in the East Coast, uh, maybe two or three weeks ago. I was right there in Seattle. It was so amazing actually being there. I'd never been to the West Coast before. And I met a lot of the CAP squadrons there in Embry-Riddle. So it was really cool, um, really amazing people. And yeah, and actually this past weekend, um, I was in an amazing place that I'm going to show you on the next slide, please. So here you can see me on the red and my friend um, right next to me. 
we went to Alaska for the week. Uh, we did a, what I'm doing right now, but I was actually there doing different briefings on different high schools. Never seen a moose before. I saw a moose actually crawling up to my room next to Reverber, so that was really cool. I didn't saw a bear though. Um, and yeah, it was really fun. Met a lot of people over there. And in our downtime, we actually went outdoors and that's how we got that picture. We went out to a hike. Um, we did different hikes. We did one about like with a four hour hike, 16, 14, well, I think it was 14 kilometers um, going up and down. So it was very tough for me. For me. And, but we got like to see all that view, all those amazing um, mountains and snow that we definitely don't have those in, in Texas. So in the background, you can see uh, that's a, a big mountain with snow. And we actually went trailblazing and tried to find ourselves uh, around to actually see the glacier uh, in the back. But we, it was very tough. <laughs> but yeah, enough about me. Um, just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and where I come from, what I like to do. Because, I mean, it's uh, the Air Force definitely helps me out on pursuing what I like to do, which is traveling and meeting people and talking to people and talking about my experience. So um, now I'm going to start talking about what an RPA is. So before uh, I actually start, I have a video, next slide, um, that I um, want, want you guys to watch. Um, and here you go. <laughs> I promise I had it there. <laughs> it's fine. When all when all else fails, we can mm -hmm. uh, we can overcome. Perhaps it's not letting me click on the, that screen. Nope. Okay, I have the video. We're dancing. We're dancing. <laughs> It's a pretty cool video, guys. It's worth it. It's totally yeah. worth it. I just have to find where I had it before I left this. There it is. I'm really excited about the future of RPAs and the MQ-9 in particular. As this career field has taken off in demand and capabilities, technology has rapidly expanded, and I feel like there are a number of mission sets and areas that we can continue to expand our capabilities and move our roles into. I'm an RPA pilot. I fly the MP9 Reaper at Holman Air Force Base in New Mexico. So the overall Air Force mission is to fly, fight, and win. I'd say that RPAs, the Predator and the Reaper in particular, have really transformed the way that the Air Force and our nation fight the war on terror. A lot of RPAs provide persistent attack. What that means is we can fly overhead the battlefield for longer than other airframes have traditionally been able to do. We also provide a level of precision in combat that is unique in the history of warfare. Over the last 10 years, I'd say the biggest change in the RPA career field has been the demands. With combat operations going on around the world, commanders in combat have a huge demand for the surveillance capabilities, the intelligence that we provide, and the strike and the kinetic options that we provide with weapons and battlefield. An RPA pilot needs to be decisive, and you also need to be able to multitask effectively. With the various mission sets, you'll be on multiple computers, flying aircraft, managing your crew. Things can be very dynamic, so you have to be able to react on the fly and make solid decisions. My favorite part of my job as a MQ-9 pilot is that I get to go out and save lives. And I know, bottom line, that I've made a difference in the world and for our country as an RPA pilot. Awesome video, right? So, oh, we back? Yep, we're back. Let me just okay. pull up the video again. It's doing that fun thing that it does. <laughs> okay. Should be up. Are you seeing the briefing? <laughs> no, it's not there. Okay, here we go. Awesome. All right. <laughs> so awesome video. So yeah, that's what I do, but that's what I'm going to be doing. So it's pretty amazing to actually have that on video and, and all, and capture most of, of, 
of the mission and wh what the possibilities are for these type of aircraft. So I'm going to start off with a couple of airframes uh, the RPAs uh, the, um, the RPAs have in the in the Air Force. So the first one is the RQ4 Global Hawk. So it's the one that you're seeing on on the screen right now. Its whole mission is for ISR, Intelligence, Surveillance, and Reconnaissance. So I like to say that that's the spy in the skies. So a, a good example to, to put it in perspective of how good this aircraft is in surveillance um, is that um, you could actually take your, your, your wallet out, take your credit card out, and this aircraft will be idle, let's say, 30,000 feet up in the air. And with the power with the powerful sensors and cameras uh, we have on that aircraft, uh, we can actually see the clearly a clear picture of all the digits in your credit card. So it's amazing how the technology has driven us to where we can actually do that. And so that is an amazing asset to have in the Air Force. So we can actually uh, provide support, um, intelligence support to the troops in the ground. So um, here in uh, with this aircraft, uh, could anybody guess around just how much it costs this aircraft? Just a wild guess, anyone? How much? I said a thousand dollars an hour to fly. Let's figure out the price of thousand dollars an hour to fly was the answer from the back. A thousand hours an hour to fly. Mm. I mean, let's put it like more into the cost. So, uh, this just one unit costs around 200 plus million dollars so just that's just with all the technology that have that we have inside that aircraft it, and all the capabilities that we that we can do with it it goes around 200 plus million dollars so it's a really amazing aircraft it's a little bit pricey but i mean it does it's it does the job well so um, we had a, a question uh, earlier before the be before the stream, um, how big are these type of aircraft? So we are we are accustomed to see drones as as RPA. Well, drones uh, RPA is mostly called drones, uh, but these are not drones. Drones are you you can see them like it's small, but here are this is a remotely piloted aircraft. So this is a fully functional aircraft, and this goes around a hundred. Well, the, its wingspan is about 131 feet so it's a really really big aircraft and um as you can see where the cockpit used to be uh there's no cockpit anymore um what we do have is just a set of different computers radars technologies that actually allow us to control that aircraft without actually being there so usually this aircraft is going to be in the other side of the world where we are actually going to be flying it from. So let's say we can actually um, man this aircraft from 60,000 miles away from the aircraft. So, I mean, for me, it's pretty amazing how, uh, how we actually managed to do that on, on such technology that we have right now. So it's pretty amazing. Um, but I mean, this, uh, this is a really cool aircraft. Um, another good example that I like to put it uh, is that is, has anyone played video games? I really like this one. So, uh, just to, to put it more specifically, uh, if you play, let's say, Call of Duty if, online, and you get three kills, you get you get a kill streak, right? The first kill streak is UAV. So this is your UAV. This is your eyes in disguise. So it's pretty cool. Um, however, the Global Hawk does have a meaner, better looking um, brother, which I'm going to show you in the next slide, please. Which is the. There we go. MG9 Reaper. Yes. Awesome. So uh, hopefully, this is the aircraft that I'm going to be flying. And as you can see, it's a little bit slimmer. And it has rockets and bombs, so it's pretty cool. Um, it does serve as the as the uh, as the RQ4's mi uh, mission with the ISR intelligence, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. However, this does have um, the ability of carrying uh, bombs and and other type of missiles, so we can deal also close air support. So. 
this was first uh this was first uh firstly seen in in another aircraft that's is no longer um operational in the air force uh, which is the mq1 and now the mq9 is the big brother of the mq1 so um this is pretty amazing how we've actually taken up a, a aircraft on man and can and can help the uh, troops in the ground even further by uh, neutralizing any threats that might occur over there. So um, now with this aircraft, uh, its wingspan is a little bit uh, smaller. The wingspan is around 60 feet, so it's significantly smaller than the RQ Force wingspan. So uh, that means that the cost is gonna be less. And so the cost for this one is around, uh, per unit, around $17 million. So it's, it's it, in, in terms of, of the aircraft, it's a lot cheaper and we can actually, we can actually um, produce or, or get more of, of, of the RPAs than actual air, uh, traditional airframes. So it's more cost effective to the Air Force and we, get, we keep our people safe. So um, what's the biggest asset that we have in the Air Force and not just in the Air Force, but but in the world is the people. The people are the assets, the biggest assets. So uh, your teachers uh, put a lot of time to actually teach you the material. Uh, the organizations like the Air Force take their time to to make me a leader and uh, and and keep evolve like um, getting me to a uh, professional state to, so I can actually fly this and be proficient if I ever actually. Uh, part from the Air Force. So here within the Air Force, getting getting the um, the people safe or the pilots specifically here in this case is key. So we actually we actually um, get an aircraft that you can do the same mission more effectively, more precisely, without actually risking the life of the pilot. So it's pretty amazing. I really I really like that idea. That you can that you can still affect the mission uh, and still be able to to walk safely. So um, here you can see in the aircraft, there's a big ball in the tip in the tip of the of the aircraft. So that ball is the sensor or the cameras of the aircraft. So that's basically turns around the whole aircraft, and we can see a detailed picture of what's in the ground. Also within that um within that ball the sensor we have laser so that's uh, the laser actually helps us guide those missiles that you see the bombs that you see um to where we actually want to drop it so it's it's amazing how precisely this aircraft is so this is unique to our uh, to our career field and our airframes because um there's always um human error and with uh, with uh, this machine this aircraft there we take that we take those errors out and we can actually uh, target a threat precisely without without having any more casualties so it's pretty it's it's a pretty amazing thing to have here in the aircraft and we just don't do um, like military missions uh, but we actually do humanitarian missions so um, a couple of years back there was a huge earthquake earthquake in Haiti and from Puerto Rico, uh, they 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 started sending the RPAs over to the to Haiti to actually um, uh, do a reconnaissance in the area to see how um, how affected it was, so that uh, all the um, rescuers and all that help could actually do a plan to actually get to the places that they needed to be. So this is a very versatile aircraft, and I really like how it's evolving. So, yeah. And the the possibilities for these aircraft are infinitely. You and you can actually put this aircraft in a box and ship it to the other side of the world. So the, the mobility uh, asset is immense. So yeah, um, just to keep it going, on um, you can see that that the cockpit's not there. So we have different different cockpits, and uh, it's called the ground control system. It's not a, it's not in the aircraft; is in the other side of the world. So 
Uh, next slide, please. So here you can see the ground control system. This is called the traditional ground control system. You saw you you saw it in the video before, and you can see that there's two people in the in in the ground control system or GCS. So the the person on the left is the pilot who's um, controlling the aircraft, and the person in the right is called the sensor operator. Operator. So remember remember when I said that the sensor is the one that actually moves around, looks at the looks at, uh, at the pictures down down in the ground, targets the, the threats. So the person on the right is actually the one doing all that stuff and manning that sensor. So as a pilot, you are tasked to take care of the aircraft, to take control of the aircraft. And um, when a strike has to happen, uh, we actually um, are the ones to to take that decision. So it's it's a pretty cool job. And with with all those screens that you see in the screen in in, in the picture, is that we actually um, keep an eye on the aircraft without actually being there. So think about it. It's pretty hard to actually fly an aircraft even though you're still in the aircraft. So imagine how difficult it has to be to actually fly the aircraft without being there. You can't feel it, you can't sense it. So uh, the situational awareness has to be 100% there every time. So with all the screens you see there, uh, we actually keep uh, track of everything. Situational awareness is, is on all the time. Uh, you can see the screens on the left of the pilot. You can see uh, the GPS, where the, the, the aircraft is going to be, where the aircraft uh, is at the moment, um, any weather. Uh, you can see in the front uh, of the, the camera that is facing to the front of the, of the aircraft. And you get all these um, screens that give you information about the aircraft so you actually know what's going on. So it's, it's pretty amazing how everything just comes together to actually be able to to fly this aircraft um, with only two people there. And we have a whole crew giving us information and in, in the ground control system. So it's, it's a big team, it's a team effort, and, uh, but it actually gets the work done. Um, on, uh, next slide, please. So here, this is called the advanced ground control system. So uh, I like this, this career field, not just because uh, I get to fly an aircraft and it's pretty cool, uh, but just because of how uh, technological it is and technological advance. So here you can actually see bigger screens um, giving you a field of view, a greater field of view of the aircraft and what's in front of it in greater, in greater detail. You, uh, basically, all the screens are um, a, a big uh, iPads where you can actually touch the screen and take control of the aircraft. Uh, you can see all the gauges where the um, uh, in the front of the of the screens uh, for usually the gauges in a traditional aircraft would be. So you get all the information right in front of you. And you get more information because you get everything from the airspeed, you get anything from uh, weather, and you actually are in a controlled environment where you can actually take decisions um, um, with more clarity without actually uh, getting that threat. So it's pretty cool. I like this one. Uh, hopefully, um, I'll be flying in this in, in, in one of these. So yeah, uh, next slide. So now uh, I'm going to be talking about the the RPA development. So this is a this is an amazing topic because uh, maybe 30, 40 years ago, uh, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be uh, thinking about having this conversation that we're having right now. So we are actually communicating from uh, different states on a phone. So that's nuts. So in 30 years ago, it was it was crazy to think that we were going to have the the capacity that we have on our phones right now to actually have a computer that can access the internet can do can take pictures it's 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 different things in just one thing in our in, a, in the palm of our hand so as crazy as it was back then it's a reality right now so and same thing with aviation right when the wright brothers were trying to to get people to fly that was crazy but they actually did it and now we have a, a different aircraft like the f-22 right there 
but now with technology growing, we get RPAs and the MQ9 that you see right there. So this is an ongoing career field that is just going to be keep evolving as the technology keeps uh, arriving to us. So as newer, better technology is available to us, we're going to be able to get more and more and more RPAs over to where they need to be and better. So it's really, it, it's really incredible how technology has driven us to a point where we can actually um, take an aircraft and fly it and carry out an important mission uh, without, asking, with, without actually risking more lives while doing so. So it's, it, it really, it, it's really an amazing career field. And just as, as, as amazing as it is in the, in the Air Force, um, the Air Force is actually training me and giving me all this, um, this potential in the private sector if I ever like, if I, if I would ever like to part from the Air Force. Um, I'm sure that I'm going to be able to get some uh, a steady job in uh, outside in the private sector. So when I was in Seattle, I didn't know Amazon had headquarters in Seattle. I was just walking, and all of a sudden, I bump into the Amazon headquarters. So uh, uh, I got there, and I actually started talking to to one of the employees, and she actually was working with um, uh, the department of the uh, drone department. So I don't know if you've seen like all the uh, posts and, and different news that actually you're going to be able in a couple of years, Amazon's trying to get drones to deliver packages. So that's actually happening. So anywhere you're going to be able to get a job if you're an RPA pilot. So and how technology is evolving and how our society is evolving. I'm pretty sure like in a couple of years, we're going to be able to see on man um, aircrafts everywhere. We're gonna we're seeing um, out of, uh, on well, it's not unmanned, but we're seeing uh, self-driven cars right now. That was that that was uh, maybe crazy to think about maybe in t 10, 15 years ago. So it's pretty cool how technology is taking us. And uh, I mean, this career field is has infinitely uh, infinite possibilities. Uh, next slide, please. And here. Uh, just to talk about infinite possibilities, we have two different aircrafts as well that uh, that just new and developing. Uh, that up there is the RQ-170, so that's an ISR um, prototype as well. And the one on the bottom is actually the MQ-25 Stingray. So that one in particular, it's pretty. I I found it really amazing because it's a uh, unmanned refueler in the Navy. So uh, what that means is that you can actually get this out of an aircraft carrier in the, in the middle of the sea, and it's gonna fly up, uh, without a person in it, and it's gonna be able to refuel different aircrafts uh, without actually having a whole crew in the aircraft getting tired um, while doing so. So you can actually keep more traditional aircrafts up in the air uh, while while you know not having to risk any more lives or or risk any more aircraft doing so so it's pretty cool how technology is gonna is is getting us and i'm pretty sure that in a couple of years we're gonna be able to see different aircrafts jets and maybe air to air unmanned aircraft someday so it's pretty cool and and i'm I'm also sure that in a couple of years you're gonna be able to see RPA pilots everywhere, just as in, in, you know, big brass. So it's pretty cool. It's an ongoing career field. It's a very new career field. So there's very little information out there. So I'm I'm super excited to actually talk about it. <laughs> Next slide. So just a summary of what I was uh, what I just talked about. I uh, just talked about uh, my background. Uh, the different airframes available in, um, in the RPA community, uh, the ground control systems or GCS, and it's development, the, R the RPA development. Um, next slide. So right now that would conclude my briefing. So I would like to open it, open the floor to any questions, if you have any questions or any comments. Um, uh, and thank you for, for your attention, really. Okay. So um, 
we actually have um, a number of people who are watching online with us tonight. So before I go to the questions in the room, we'll take one of the ones that we have uh, online. Um, I will also give a shout out for the local units that are online. Green River is on with us. I see uh, Fort Vancouver, Spokane. Um, so thank you to everyone locally who called in and is listening along. Um, Green River is really representing three, four members. Um, one awesome. of the, yeah, one of the questions that we had was, um, do RPA pilots have other crewmen operating supporting systems while flying the RPA? Can you repeat that question, please? Do RPA pilots have other crewmen operating supporting systems while flying the RPA? Yes. So just as the sensor operators right there, we have different, so uh, we have different crew members in, in our ground control system. So ground control systems uh, basically look like a big box, a trailer, and it's filled with computers and, and different personnel that um, feed us information about what we're looking at in, in the aircraft. So let's say um, we are doing a, a reconnaissance mission um, in just an area of responsibility. Uh, we're going to have intel officers uh, actually giving us uh, information while we while we are looking at the at the area of responsibility, so that we actually get a clear picture of what we're looking at or or what should we look, be looking at. Excellent. So there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people um, uh, actually. Uh, taking part of flying the aircraft. I'm just moving the sticks and taking positions. They are just giving me information, information. Awesome, thank you. That question was actually from a member in um, Nevada in Humboldt County Composite Squadron, so. Ooh, awesome. Yeah, um, who in the room has a question? Right there in the back, sir? Yes. Speak I up loud. I the other day in the Air Force Times, it just uh, pinned the first female pilot. Is that, uh, is that they going to be doing the same duties that you're doing your training for? So um, let, let me, uh, it was very difficult to hear you, but you're, you were asking for the first forward one. Enough. David, can you hear me now? Please come forward to the microphone so it picks you up for the recording. Thanks. Okay. I was just reading in the Air Force Times that they just gave bend wings on the first female RTA pilot. Now, I'm not sure if she was enlisted or if she, you know, don't quite understand the, you know, where, where she's, what she's going to be doing. Okay. Um, so, so your question is, is she going to be this, doing the same duties that we're going to be doing? Exactly. So, uh, I mean, she's going to be a pilot. She's going to be able to do uh, what, pilot, what pilots do. She's going to carry out the mission as effectively and, and precisely as possible. So um, I'm, I'm really sure that, I mean, she's going to be able to do all the tasks. She's just going to be a pilot. Is there a shortage of RTA pilots? There is a shortage of RP, RPA pilots, it, it, but there's a shortage of RPA pilots because of the high demand that we have right now, because how big an asset we are to the Air Force right now. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Who else? thought I saw a cadet hand go up. Sir, in the back, can you come forward for the microphone? Looks like you have a couple questions. I do have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, Lieutenant, thank you very much for your service and what you're doing for us. I really appreciate that. Um, one question thank I have is you have the ground control system and you had the advanced ground control system. And it looked yes. like the, the ground control system was a two-person operation, but it looked like the advanced was a single-person operation. Is it? Are you flying solo there or are you still working with a co-pilot or a weapons officer? Great question and great eye, by the way. Um, so the ground, the traditional ground control system is definitely manned by two people. Um, now, the advanced ground control system, it just depends on the aircraft and the airframe. But some aircraft are, might have just a one-seater instead of two. So the pilot gonna, is going to have the responsibility of... of manning the sensor and getting all the the training that they do and and just a, and have it right there and then i have a second question if you don't mind i'm picturing in my mind that there may be downtime while the, the the aircraft is going into or out of the theater and 
just tell me if I'm crazy. Is there an opportunity for you to get up and go get a soda and get a candy bar from the vending machine and then come back? Or are you pretty much locked in there the entire time that that, that airframe's in the air? I mean, there's definitely an opportunity for you to to stretch and actually uh, do your business. But um, this, since this is a versatile aircraft, uh, let's say there's like shifts. So if there's not a pilot mining it, there's going to be, it, and we step out, there's going to be someone that's going to man it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yes. That actually, that brings me to a follow-up question that we had from the internet. Um, does, uh, let's see, do you pilot the aircraft uh, from start and taxi and taxi to shutdown, or are takeoff and landings handled by in-theater personnel handling the aircraft or handing the aircraft off to you once it's airborne? So the correct answer would be the second, the second one. So the, uh, there's uh, RPAs uh, deployed in the theater who actually um, are able to uh, take, uh, take off and land the aircraft and we actually get control of the aircraft afterwards. So I actually, that brings me to yet another follow on, which we discussed when we originally met um, on your trip to Seattle. Uh, which is how civil air control gets to participate with your mission. Um, I understand you know a bit more about it now. So do you want to see yes. all with how we work together? Yes. Awesome. So, so how, so this was really, really cool. I didn't know this up, uh, up until I got to this, uh, to Seattle. Uh, so uh, the CAP actually helps the mission of the RPAs uh, to in training, for example, in New York, the, the uh, we actually need support for us to travel uh, to through different airspace and have actual VFRs and visuals on the aircraft. So the CAP takes a like a huge um, part of that uh, of that scenario because they actually fly with us to um, to our squadrons in New York. So it's pretty cool. I didn't know I didn't know about that up, up until I got into Seattle. So it's really awesome how CAP is taking a, a huge part on, on 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 our training for and readiness for RPAs. Awesome, thank you. All right, somebody else in the room. All right. Well, Lieutenant Fraz, I just want to thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I think we managed to do an okay job with our broadcast. Um, we actually had some people from across the country join in with us, and we just want to thank you again for your service and for spending the evening with us. Definitely. It's my pleasure to actually uh, be here and, and, and be the first. I mean, it's my first time doing a, a teleconference like this, so I'm pretty excited. So uh, really looking forward to working with you guys again.